ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان خير الحديث كتاب الله عز وجل وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار brothers and sisters almost 1400 years ago a little bit more than 1400 years ago the muslims with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam went to the battle of khaybar and they went to the battle and alhamdulillah the muslims were successful victorious after the battle as was the custom in those days that the spoils of war the the both armies would bring their riches whatever assets they had they would bring them to the battlefield and after the war the whoever won would take all the assets or uh, property from the loser so after the war brothers and sisters the muslims gained a lot of spoils of war and as was the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as commanded by allah in the quran ar rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam distri- distributed the spoils of war among all the warriors among all the people who fought in the battle and you know there was a portion for himself and so on brothers and sisters it so happened that after the distribution of all the spoils of war that one of the companions one of the sahaba was absent and so his portion was saved by the other sahaba and they brought it they brought the spoils his his uh, spoils of uh, you know his portion to medina so in in those spoils or in in the things that he gained was you know there were some weapons and there was a lot of gold a lot of money and you know sheep and lambs and and goats and you know a lot of animals you know farm animals and so on that used to be considered you know uh, property that was very beneficial to make a person rich in those days so when he came to medina the sahaba came to him and told him that look this is your portion and this is what you should get so when he came when the sahaba brought it to him he he was a little alarmed and he said this is not why i fought in the war in the battle to get all this stuff that this is not the reason so they said well you can talk to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so he went to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he came to the with all his 
those that that property he came to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he, and there was a whole group of sahaba as always around the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said ya rasulullah ma li hadha tabatuk o messenger of allah it's not for this reason that i followed you it's not for this reason that i followed you meaning gaining all these assets so then ar rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said to him alamat tabatani then what did you follow me for what did you follow me he said innani ittaba'tuka ala an urma ha huna he said the reason i followed you is that one day i will be hit with an arrow right in the nape of my neck right here in other words he wanted his shahada he wanted his shahada because he knew the reward of a shaheed you see the reward of a shaheed is huge that the with the first drop of blood you're forgiven by allah everything and then on the day of judgment allah will give you a special garment known as the garment of iman and allah will show you your the uh, the minute you pass away allah will show you your place in paradise and jannah and if you die as a shaheed allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you a crown on the day of judgment that one pearl in it is worth more than this entire dunya this entire world and there's no punishment in the grave for the one who dies as a shaheed and on the day of judgment when the final when the final time the trumpet is blown into and everybody is terrorized everybody is horrified the shaheed does not have to go through that the shaheed won't be terrorized in any way won't be alarmed and they get the hur al ain and in addition to that they subhanallah they get to ask or intercede for 70 of their relatives and they will those relatives will be forgiven by allah and they will all go to jannah so when ar rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam heard this from him he said that this is not why i followed you i followed you so i would be hit right here in the nape of my neck with an arrow or a spear and he wanted his shahada so ar rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said in tasdiq allah yasdiq yasdiq if you are true this is the key word here if you are true to allah then allah will be true to you then allah will be true to you subsequently there was another battle and the muslims were victorious ar rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked the sahaba where is this where is this man who had come up to him and by the way the hadith does not mention his name this hadith that i'm relating to you does not mention his name but allah knows who he is so anyway ar rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked him i asked the sahaba where he is so the sahaba they brought his body he had passed away he had died in the battle so ar rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he saw the body he said ah huwa huwa is is he the man is he the one so the sahaba said huwa huwa that's him. it is him as him so ar rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said sadaq allah fa sadaqahu allah he was true to allah and allah was true to him and allah was true to him and then ar rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam he raised his hands up in the air in dua and he said allahumma inna 'abdaka hadha kharaja mujahidan fi sabilik fa qutila shahidan wa ana ala dhalika shaheed he said oh allah this man here he left his home 
to fight in the way of Allah. And he, and he passed away as a shaheed. And I am a witness to the fact that he died as a shaheed. SubhanAllah, brothers and sisters, think about it just for a moment. Would you want anybody else to bear witness for you? This is the greatest man who walked the face of this earth is bear bearing witness. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brothers and sisters, the whole message of me relating this story to you is to talk about the value of truth. That how we as Muslims have to be truthful, have to be true to the message of this deen. It is a value that is so simple, but yet most challenging. To be truthful, to be true to Allah, to speak the truth, to have that integrity. Yet today, it's a lot of people distrust each other. Even in the Muslim community, people distrust each other. Why? Because they're afraid they're not telling the truth. Because they've observed that that person may not have told the truth at one time, or may not have acted in a true way. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ دِيْوَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ يَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ وَاسْتَرْشِدُوهُ يُرْشِدْكُمْ وَاسْتَهْدُوهُ يَهْدِكُمْ الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد اللهم صل وسلم على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين brothers and sisters the Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم gave us an order not a choice an order and he said عليكم بالصدق you must, you have to be truthful. You have to be true to Allah. عَلَيْكُمْ بِالصِّدْقِ Why? فَإِنَّ الصِّدْقَ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْبِرِّ Because truth, your being truthful, your being true to Allah, leads to everything that is righteous, everything that is good. In other words, all good is rooted in the fact that you tell the truth and that you are true to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِنَّ الْبِرِّ It doesn't end there. وَإِنَّ الْبِرِّ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ And all these good deeds, all this righteousness leads to Jannah. It starts with the truth and it ends with Jannah. And then he goes on, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's a long hadith. And he goes on and he says, وَمَا يَزَالُ الرَّجُلُ يَصْدُقُ وَيَتَحَرَّ الصِّدْقِ حَتَّى يُكْتَبَ عِنَّ اللَّهِ صِدِّقًا And a person keeps on practicing the truth, telling the truth and being truthful and always is pursuing the truth to be truthful or to be true. Always is pursuing this. Until it is recorded with Allah that He is Siddiq, He is the truthful one. SubhanAllah. He's not recorded in the newspaper or in, on, on, in, social, on, uh, in the social media or you know, in, in some email or whatever as a truthful one. No, 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 no. With Allah. With Allah. With Allah. Then the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes and tells us the opposite of, the, of being truthful. He says in the same hadith, the second part of the hadith, وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَالْكَذِبِ And don't you dare lie. Don't you, وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَالْكَذِبِ Don't you dare lie. فَإِنَّ الْكَذِبِ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْفُجُورِ Because lying leads to all types of sin and immorality. وَإِنَّ الْفُجُورِ يَهْدِي لَلنَّارِ And 
that immorality, that sinfulness leads you to the hellfire. وَمَا يَزَالُ الرَّجُلُ يَكْذِبُ وَيَتَحَرَّ الْكَذِبُ And a person, they keep on lying and they keep on pursuing lying in whatever way. حَتَّى يُكْتَبَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ كَذَّابًا Until he's recorded with Allah as a liar. As a liar. Brothers and sisters, each one of us is mature enough to decide how do you want yourself to be recorded with Allah before you pass away? As one who tells the truth, as one who's true to Allah, or one who's a liar? Brothers and sisters, Rasul sallallahu you know, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, in Surah al tawbah Ayah 119, Surah, Surah 9, Ayah 119. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu Allah wa koonu ma'a sadiqeen. O you who have believed in this message of Islam, have committed yourselves to this message of Islam, have believed, fear Allah. Be watchful of your sins and do not commit any of the sins because Allah is watching. And be with the true, the truthful ones. Be with the ones who are true to this message. وَكُونُوا مَعَ الصَّادِقِينَ Be with them in your speech, in your actions, in your, uh, in your temperament, in your conditions. Be with those people who are true to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, in, in Surah Al-Ahzab, Surah uh, 33, Ayah 24, لِيَجْزِيَ اللَّهُ الصَّادِقِينَ بِالصِّدْقِهِمْ that Allah will reward the truthful ones because of their because of their being truthful, being true to this message. مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ رِجَالٌ صَدَقُوا مَا عَاهَدُ اللَّهَ عَلَيْهِ Among the believers are those people who were true to what they promised and they made a covenant with Allah. فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ قَضَى نَحْبَهِ Among them were those who gave up their lives. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَنْتَظِرُ and among them are believers who are waiting. وَمَا بَدَّلُوا تَبْدِيلًا And they, they, their determination never waned in the least. Brothers and sisters, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and even all the prophets before him, if you take a look at the Qur'an, it talks, one of the qualities the Qur'an mentions, one of their salient qualities was, that they were truthful, that they were true to the message. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to them as Siddiq in the Quran. And Al Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as you know, what his, his nickname was, you know, he was a Sadiq. Huh? That he, he was very truthful, as Sadiq al Amin, the one who is trustworthy, truthful and trustworthy. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's why Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he, uh, he uh, no, Aisha Radiallahu Anha says about him that, uh, um, uh, as a matter of fact, he himself said that, أَحَبُّ الْحَدِيثَ إِلَيَّ أَصْدَقُهُ That the most beloved of talk, when you talk to me, the most beloved of your speech to me is the one that is the most truthful. In fact, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you notice that somebody in his family would say, you know, just uh, have a little lie, you know, speak a little lie, you know, the, what we call today the white lie, you know, just a little white lie, he would avoid their company, he would begin avoiding their company until they did tawbah. This is how serious of a matter this is, brothers and sisters, to be true, to be truthful. And there, you know, uh, one time Rasul Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Da' ma, and you, I'm sure you all have heard of this hadith, Da' ma yuribuk ila ma la yuribuk. Leave that which is doubtful, that makes you doubt, for those things that do not make you doubt. فَإِنَّ الصَّدْقَ تَمَأْطَمَأْنِينَ وَالْكَذِبُ riba. Because being truthful, being true, gives you peace in your heart gives you peace. And lying makes you uneasy and makes you doubtful and nervous and stressed and tense. 
Brothers and sisters, in our everyday lives, what does it mean to be truthful and to be true to Allah? It means that when we speak, we speak the truth. We speak the truth. It does not mean we should be rash and harsh. There's, this is the wisdom of how you express the truth. Allah says in the Quran, invite to the way of your Lord with wisdom. You know, we have a lot of people going around and say, well, I'll just say it as it is. I don't care anything. And I'll just say it to their face. I'll say it right on their face. Is that the way of the Prophet ﷺ? No. He was wise in the way that he brought the message to the people so that they would love the message, not hate the message. So that they would love the message. They would love Allah. That was the key thing for them to get to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's, it's one of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قُلْ صَدَقَ اللَّهِ Allah says in the Qur'an that Allah has spoken the truth. وَمَنْ أَصْدَقُ مِنَ اللَّهِ حَدِيثًا وَمَنْ أَصْدَقُ مِنَ اللَّهِ قِيلًا In Surah An-Nisa, these ayat are given. That who is, there's no one uh, more truthful than Allah in their speech. So it's something really noble for us to tell the truth and be truthful. So the first area is to be truthful in our tongue, to speak the truth. Number two, is to always have the true intention, the right intention. That is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is linked to wh whether our deeds will be accepted by Allah or not. How truthful we are in our intention. That whatever I'm doing, Ya Allah, this is for you. It's not for me. This is for you, Ya Allah. The intention has to be straight. This is another way that you, how you can be true to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you decide to do something and you set a goal for yourself that I'm going to do this, then you're true to that goal. You strive as hard as you can. This is being true in your determination, in your, in your drive to do something. You don't give up. You are true to Allah. In your actions, your private life matches your public life. You're true. There's that integrity that is there. When you fear Allah, you truly fear Him. It's not an act that you put on. When you pin your hopes on Allah, you're true to Allah in putting your hopes on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you say you love Allah, you're true, you truly love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're not putting on an act. Brothers and sisters, you know, the famous concept of sadaqa. Sadaqa. You know, a lot of, most Muslims translate the word sadaqa as charity. It's not charity. Sadaqah, you know, you know, the money that you give or the, uh, whatever you give in the way of Allah, it could be a car, it could be your time, it could be your talent, could be your skill, it could be your money, it could be many things. People call that, they translate that as charity. Brothers and sisters, Sadaqah is not charity. The word Sadaqah comes from the trilateral root Sad Dal Qaf. Those of you who know Arabic. It means to be truthful, to be true to Allah. So when you spend in the way of Allah, you're showing that you're so true to Allah, you don't care about that money, you're gonna give it because you know that Allah will replace it. Because that's what Allah promises us in the Quran. You know that very well. And so you're not afraid to spend the money. And when you give charity, you, you spend that what you don't need. I have to clean out my garage, it's springtime. I have to give my leftovers to the masjid. Oh, this computer almost works, but not quite. You just have to get fixed a little. People give stuff that they don't need. That's charity. The concept of sadaqah is totally different. You don't give your leftovers. You give your choicest wealth in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Because you know Allah is giving you the best and you want to give the best for the sake of Allah. Brothers and sisters, you know, in our community itself, we've had so many incidents where people have done tawbah and, and done the right thing and adhere to the truth. And Allah rewarded them. I want to just share with you one of those examples. It happened with one of our, one of our high school students. She, it, it so happened that they had to move away. She, was, she started high school with us, but they had to move away and she, in the, in the area that they moved to, there was no Islamic schools. So she happened to go to the public schools. Anyway, to make a long story short, uh, she, the time came where they had to, you know, give their exams for various subjects and so on. So there was a subject that was very hard for her, which was science. And so she studied as hard as she could. And she says that, SubhanAllah, I, I shouldn't have done this, but there's one question that I couldn't answer on the test. And I looked over at my neighbor and I saw the answer and I put it down. And, and I got, you know, I, I got a very high grade on the exam. As a matter of fact, the highest grade in the class. But I felt in front of Allah, this is the, you know, Alhamdulillah, she learned something from the school, Al Huda school. And she said, I have felt the presence of Allah. And I know this was not right what I did. So I went to the teacher, it was a non-Muslim teacher. I went to the teacher and I told, I told her that, Miss, you know, I, this, this question here, I don't deserve the, uh, the points for this. Uh, can you just take off those points from my, from my score? So the teacher said, well, what, what happened? Why, why are you saying that? You know, this is, a, this, is, this is one of the big questions on the exam. And this is going to bring you down a letter from an A to a B. So she said, I, I don't mind because I cheated. My, uh, I looked over at my neighbor and I saw the answer and then I gave the answer. So I, I cheated and you see, I'm a Muslim. Imagine the da'wah that is going forth now. She said, you see, I'm a Muslim. And as Muslims, we are answerable to a higher authority and a higher standard. So I'm asking you to take off those points, even if I don't care if it reduces me down a letter grade. The teacher said, you know, in all my 20 years of teaching, I've never had an experience like this. As a matter of fact, not only will I leave those points where they are, but I'm going to give you a chance for extra credit. So the score will even be higher. Now, brothers and sisters, this young lady, Muslim young lady, high schooler, was not looking for that. She was just being, she was practicing her taqwa. She had the taqwa. The taqwa. The taqwa that sometimes we don't have when we fill out our taxes. And so on. Brothers and sisters, to be truthful, to tell the truth. A very noble and essential quality for the believer, for the Muslim. The reason we believe is because we believe in the truth. And we can never lie upon Allah and His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is these things that will benefit us on the Day of Judgment and in getting to the hereafter. As Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says in Surah Al-Ma'idah at the end, Ayah 119, هَذَا يَوْمُ الصَّادِقِينَ this is the day where 
the truth, their being truthful will benefit the ones who are truthful. This is the day. رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ رَبَّنَا لَا تَزِقْ قُلُوبَنَا بَعْدَ إِذْ هَدَيْتَنَا وَحَبْ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ رَحْمَةً إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْوَهَابُ وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ